Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how to install Apache Guacamole on a Raspberry Pi. Apache Guacamole is a clientless remote desktop gateway, and it basically runs in your browser and allows you to connect to all of your devices through VNC, SSH, or RDP. It's super simple to set up, and it runs very well on a Raspberry Pi 4. Now, I wouldn't use anything uh, older than a Raspberry Pi 4, mostly because a Raspberry Pi 4 comes standard with gigabit Ethernet, which is very handy when you're using Apache Guacamole because everything's done through your network. So having higher network speeds will automatically translate to a better user experience. So before we get started, I just wanted to mention that I have full written instructions for everything in the description. So we're going to be installing Guacamole on a Raspberry Pi, but we're going to be doing it through Portainer. So if you haven't actually set up Docker and Portainer on a Raspberry Pi, I have a tutorial that will show you how to do that. So I'll leave a link in the description and I'll leave a pop-up now. But the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open Portainer and we're going to select volumes and then we're going to add a new volume. And what we're going to do is we're going to give it the name of guacamole and then create the volume. And what this will do is this will store all of those files in one directory in case you want to back this up. After that, you can go to containers and then you can add a new container and we're going to have to make a few adjustments here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to give it a name and then in the image section, we're going to download the ARM version of guacamole and that is because the Raspberry Pi uses an ARM processor. So you have to ensure that you use this specific image, otherwise it's not going to work. After you do that, you can specify the manual ports and we're going to be using 8080 for both the host and the container. So that means that when you're accessing guacamole, you'll have to use port 8080. Now, if you're using that port for something else, you can specify pretty much anything you want here in the host section. Um, just make sure that it's not something that's currently being used. After that, at the bottom, we're gonna head over to the volume section and we're gonna map the config directory to the guacamole volume that we created earlier. We're then gonna to go to the restart policy and we're gonna set this as always. And that just ensures that if you reboot your Raspberry Pi, this container will automatically restart. After that, you can deploy the container, and this is gonna take about five to 10 minutes to fully download the image and actually install it. So be patient here. But as soon as it's finished, you should be able to go to the IP address of your Raspberry Pi and port 8080, and you should be brought to the Guacamole login page. So you're gonna sign in with the username guacadmin and the password guacadmin. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, create a new user, and we're gonna delete this existing user. So the way that we do that is you can go into the settings, go to the user section, add a new user, and then you can give it a username and password. And when you're done with that, what you're gonna have to do is log out, then you're gonna log back in with that new user that you just created, and then you're gonna go back to the settings, users, and then you're gonna delete that Guac admin account. So this is the default account. This isn't an account that you wanna use, so that's the reason why we're doing that. After that's done, you are ready to create new remote connections. So I'm not gonna go through each instance here, uh, mostly because it's pretty much the exact same process. You're really just adding a new record and ensuring that the destination server is set up properly. So when I say destination server, I really mean that if you're connecting to a Windows PC, for example, that you have a loud remote desktop connection on that. If you're connecting to a uh, Linux server, you're ensuring that VNC is set up or SSH is set up you're really configuring the destination server because in Guacamole, the setup process is super simple. So I'll quickly just walk through how you can create a connection group and then how you can create a new connection. And then I'll show you how I connect. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the settings and then we're gonna go into connections and we're gonna create a new group. Now a group is what holds different devices. So for me, what I normally do is I break it up by operating system. So I have Windows and I have Linux. That's not to say that that's how you have to set it up. You can kind of set it up however you want to, but that's how I generally break it up. I break it up by operating system. So after that's done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the connection section and I'm gonna to go to new connection. I'm then gonna give it a name and I'm gonna pick a location for it. And under protocol, I'm gonna select either RDP, VNC, or SSH. So this will be dependent on how you want to connect to your device. So after you do that, is you're gonna scroll down a little and you're gonna find the network section. And you're gonna to have to give the network the host name and then the port and then your username and password. Now the port for RDP is 3389. For VNC, it's normally 5900, but I have seen it uh, as 5800 and I believe even 5901 in certain 
uh, Ubuntu installations. So you're going to have to check your setup for that one. Uh, and SSH is port 22. So as soon as you do that and you give it your username and password, there's a bunch of different options on this page. You can go through each of them if you want, but generally that's kind of the bulk of the setup. All these other things can be configured as well, but I'll leave that up to you to look through. Save that connection, and if you go back to the home at this point, you should be able to log in properly, and you should be able to connect. Everything should work at that point. So you're connected to your remote desktop through Guacamole on your Raspberry Pi. So that was hopefully easy enough. The final thing I want to mention is that right now, this is only accessible through your local network. So if you wanted to expose that to the internet, and it's questionable on if you should or if you shouldn't, if you have a VPN, you should definitely just use that. Uh, but if you really want to expose this to the outside world, it's a good idea to set up a reverse proxy. I have a tutorial on how you can do that on a Raspberry Pi using uh, Nginx Proxy Manager, and that will automatically assign an SSL certificate. But outside of that, it's still a good idea to enable multi-factor authentication. So if this is exposed to the internet, you wanna ensure that you have a very secure password and you also have two-factor authentication enabled. So the way that you can do that is you can go in and you can edit the, uh, the container and then you can add a new environment variable called extensions. And the value that you're gonna put there is auth-totp. Now what this does is when you go in and you uh, redeploy this container, it's going to replace your old one. And then when you try and log in, it's going to automatically enforce you to use uh, two-factor authentication. So you can use your favorite app, whether that's Authy or Google Authenticator, or there's tons of them out there. Uh, but you're going to use your favorite app, you're going to set up two-factor authentication, and then you're going to be able to use that moving forward. So that's if you want to expose this to the internet. It's, you know, doesn't hurt if you want to do it internally too. It's just, uh, it's just not as necessary. So go through, add all of your systems to Guacamole, separate them how you want by using different groups, uh, and tell me what you think in the comments. I've been using Guacamole for a while now, and I really like the fact that I'm centrally managing everything. I always use different remote desktop connection managers, but I really like the fact that I'm able to manage everything in one central location. It's all accessible through a web browser and I can access it anywhere in the world if I really wanted to. Uh, so that wraps up the video for today. If you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and subscribe. Thanks guys.